British Prime Minister Gordon Brown began by calling on MPs of all parties to support moves to extend detention without charge in some cases. I have appealed to members of this House to look at this matter so that we can find a consensus. And I have said that the Civil Contingencies Act, which some people wish to use for this purpose, would mean that you would go beyond 28 days but have to declare a state of emergency to do so. So there are many people in this House who would be prepared uh, to have a period of more than 28 days uh, but to do so, we would have to declare a state of emergency. I'm proposing, and the government is proposing, that we give a power to the House that the Home Secretary, with the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Head of the Metropolitan Police, would have to come to this House with an order, and the House would have to vote a second time as to whether they approved the action so that someone was detained before they were charged for more than 28 days. And I believe that the safeguards that we've put in place, and these are safeguards that protect the citizen against arbitrary treatment that include uh, the action of a judge every seven days to review, the, uh, to review the detention, include also a report by the independent reviewer, and include the Home Secretary having to come to the House and a final report being made on how the procedure had been adopted. These are the protections for civil liberties that people have asked for. But I have to take the advice of other people who tell me that it is important that we have a precautionary power in place so that if it is if there is a multiple incident, then we can go beyond 20, 28 days with the approval of the House. I have looked at terrorist incidents over the last few years, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, and I've looked at the sophistication of terrorists who are using multiple passports, who are using multiple telephone numbers, multiple emailing facilities. If we had a plot involving a number of people, we would need more than 28 days to review all the evidence. And I believe that most sensible people in this his House, as well as most members of the general public, support that position, and I hope the House votes for it. He then turned to the continuing conflicts in the Middle East and the 60th anniversary of the creation of the State of Israel. I wish to add my congratulations uh, to the State of Israel on the 60th uh, anniversary. And Israel has come a long way in those uh, 60 years. And I look forward uh, to being present at the Finchley United Synagogue with the Chief Rabbi this evening uh, to celebrate 60 years. Uh, Israel's future is as part of a secure Middle East, and it must remain optimistic that this can be achieved. And we will work with people of both sides to secure a settlement, a two-state solution, with a viable Palestine alongside a secure Israel. And I believe that is the best guarantee of the future of Israel in the next 60 years to come. Finally, he offered support to South African port workers who refused to unload a vessel carrying arms destined for Zimbabwe. Mr. Speaker, I have uh, given support uh, to those uh, South African uh, workers who stopped an arms shipment coming from China that would have gone to Zimbabwe. And at the same time, we have been calling at the United Nations for an arms embargo uh, to prevent other arms and armaments getting into the country of Zimbabwe at this uh, time. This is a very uh, critical time uh, for, for, for Zimbabwe, and I think it's important that uh, we recognize that uh, the African Union and SADAC and all those who have an interest in the future of Zimbabwe uh, put uh, pressure so that any elections that take place uh, in Zimbabwe are free and fair, monitored by the whole international community to be seen as free and fair, so that justice is done in securing for the Zimbabwean people their democratic rights. Gordon Brown also sent his condolences to a member of Britain's household cavalry who was killed while serving in Afghanistan.